Let's talk about something super important. Something more important than movement tech, than DI, than combos, than counterpicks, than stages, than anything you're gonna find in game. Let's talk about your mentality. But first, let's talk about ProGuides.com. If you're looking for great specific character guides that break down things like edge guarding, then head to ProGuides.com. If you're looking for courses featuring pros like MKLeo or even one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, you can find them on our website too. Now, let's get on to the mental game. We know, we know, you probably came here for something to help you win and you might be thinking, this ain't it. But you're doing yourself a huge disservice if you ignore the role your mentality plays in winning. But hey, don't take it from us, take it from Mango. After Mango's big win at the big house, he didn't credit it to tech skill, he credited it to having a good mentality the whole tournament. In a post-tournament interview with ESPN, Mango talked about his mentality before anything else and more than anything else. I was just really happy with my mentality. Like, I think I got zero to death first stock. So I was down a whole stock, didn't let it bother me. I was like, we still have three stocks, like, just gotta play well. I'm um, just more so proud of my mindset, mentality. Like, I never gave up, and when I won, like, I could tell he started crumbling. Truth is, even if you aren't the controller throwing, Twitter ranting, screaming in the face of your opponent kind of person, you still need to run maintenance on your mental game. When it comes to the mind and emotions, we tend to think things are set. He's just an angry person, she's just a salty person, they're just a sad person. In reality, you can and should work on your mental state as much as your physical state. The work you do on your physical state always feels more real because it's tangible. You lift a weight or go running and feel your muscles work. Working on your mental state can feel like a fake or trivial thing because it doesn't feel tangible. But if you're ever wondering just how important your mindset is, think about how much easier things are when you're in a good mood. That call you need to make, that thing you need to do, that conversation you want to have, all of it moves fluidly when you're feeling yourself. On the other hand, if your mood is bad, even the easiest things feel like chores. But here's the thing, how can you feel good after getting nair looped by a Palutena for 15 straight seconds? How can you stay steady after getting thwacked by Hero at 0%? L like, what is that? Are you kidding me? I, I hate this game! Ugh. How do you beat Tilt and Rage and stay in a good mood when it comes to Smash? First, you gotta understand why we get tilted. You gotta know why emotions exist and what they tell us. A lot of people get the idea that emotion is the enemy of rationality. But if you want to have a really strong mentality, then you gotta get rid of the idea of emotions being roadblocks and start understanding them as survival tools. It's hard to know exactly why we have emotions, but evolution is a good start. Scientists theorize that emotions are one of the tools that help humans and other animals survive in nature. The happiness you feel eating a good cooked meal keeps you from starving and from getting diseases from eating raw meat. The fear you feel hearing a large dog growl is the same fear that kept your distant caveman ancestors from getting eaten by wolves. More complex emotions can have social rules. Guilt is a particular kind of sadness you feel when you did something wrong in a social scenario, so it helps us rebuild alliances or avoid social strife. Frustration can let us know where there are inefficiencies or inequalities that hurt our ability to survive. Worry can push us to think about long-term issues we need to prepare for. These complex social emotions are a big part of what helps humans live in big groups and thrive, and that's vital. After all, it's pretty tough to 1v1 a tiger. So emotions aren't opposed to rationality or clear thinking, they're actually a part of it. Emotions are a way for your brain to get you to react quickly or easily to something. You know that deep, deep suffering you feel when Palutena hits you with an up air and all you can do is wait for it to kill you? That's your brain saying, please don't let this happen again, oh man. When it comes to Smash, we feel an insane range of complex emotions. A friend could style on you in bracket, and you could feasibly feel pride, respect, anger, sadness, disbelief, and fear all at the same time. That's part of the joy of Smash, and really any competitive game. With all those emotions running through you, life feels colorful. So the first thing to know is emotions aren't bad, but they are inevitable. You cannot, and should not, repress them. Keeping everything in can hurt your mind so much that it starts to hurt your body. Psychologists have written books and run studies on this, and they routinely show repressing your emotions represses your body's immune system. That repressed anger makes it easier to get all kinds of illness, ranging from a cold to cancer. 
One study even found that 84% of 567 common medical complaints had no physical cause. In other words, the body wasn't in trouble, the mind was. But acknowledging and accepting your emotions is only the first step. We don't want you throwing controllers or hurling insults. So what do you do when emotions become too much? We all have those moments when an emotion becomes so heavy that nothing can escape its gravity. Everything revolves around the emotions that you're feeling. These moments can be frustrating because it's hard to focus and you know you could snap and do something that gets you on a top 10 saltiest moments video. One thing you can do is change your focus. Weldon, a former sports psychologist and now coach of CLG, talks about an important factor when it comes to anger and tilt, control. When you're really tilted, it's easy to focus on what you can't control. So you start focusing on how stupid DDD's Gordos are, or how easy it is for Olimar to spot dodge cancel up smash, or how Fox gets everything he wants off of one neutral air. <sighs> control. Like I was saying, you can even focus on your emotions themselves and feel angry that you're angry. You're so angry that you're angry that you get furious, and then you get furious that you're furious, and then you do something dumb. As Walden says in one of his videos, understand that focusing on things you cannot control leads to lower performance and also frustration. Recognize what you have control over. You have control over your actions and behavior. You do not have control over your emotions. So you can't just snap your fingers and make the mad go away, but you can hold yourself back before you let that Twitter rant ride. That brings us to the very first step in beating tilt and rage. Focus on what you can control. There is no shortage of frustrating characters in Ultimate. There are so many annoying mechanics that pretty much every character in Ultimate gets hate for one thing or another. That means it can be super easy to tilt yourself by focusing on that annoying mechanic that you just can't do anything about. No, you can't ban Joker's back air, or Palutena's neutral air, or Hero. Wait, actually forget I said that last part. What you can do is focus on the weaknesses and ways to punish that move so that you see it less. You might not control the move, but you do control your response to it. And chances are, you do have a way to respond to it. Fighting games can feel frustrating, but the good ones come with tons of counterplay. By focusing on what you can do in-game, you do a lot to help yourself get better. First, you reduce your own frustration because you're not wrapped up in what you can't control. Second, you start thinking about your game plan and how to improve yourself. And third, you empower yourself and keep positive by believing that you can shape the outcome of the game. Focus is just as important in the game as it is out of the game. When you lose in a close, meaningful set, you'll probably feel something. And we've established that that's both normal and uncontrollable. So instead, establish how you want to behave right after and focus on controlling that. Honestly, you might not want to smile and chat the day away, but you probably do want to get that honorable fist bump so you don't look salty. After that loss, you want to focus on your behavior and what you can do to deal with those feelings in a healthy, responsible way. If that means you want to smile and socialize a bit, then great! If that means you need to get that bare minimum of respect out and then leave the venue to cool off, that's great too. Everyone is going to handle things in their own way, and that leads us to the next big step in handling your emotions. Knowing yourself. This is where we're going to get a bit deep. The truth is, even though we all have emotions for the same evolutionary reasons, all our emotions work differently. Some of us get sad and blame ourselves right after a loss. Other people get mad and blame anything but themselves. We get our emotions from our history, from things like how our caregivers handled their emotions, how other people responded to our emotions, and sometimes from trauma, the unfortunate stuff that's happened to us. That's why knowing ourselves and knowing our emotions can be really tough. It's not always easy to look back at our own history, issues, and mental health. There can be a lot of stigma and pain there. It's pretty darn hard to take that deep look, but if you can know what sets you off, you can learn how to counter it. That's the real-life matchup knowledge. When you're looking into your own emotions, try and start simple. For example, what physical states make you more likely to get angry or tilted? If you get cranky when you're tired, then prioritize good sleep and keeping your energy up. If you get hangry, focus on eating well and staying full. Those are just basic solutions too. If you think more about your body's role in your emotions, you can develop more advanced solutions. If you're a cranky gamer, you can try to find the weekend tournaments that start earlier or bring some caffeine with you. If you're a hangry gamer, you can keep power bars and snacks on hand. 
Another simple thing to do is identify your pet peeves. Certain things are gonna make you particularly mad, and sometimes these things aren't hard to avoid. You might get really angry at the input lag online and focus on it way too much. So, try to play online less and find more people to play in person. You might get really tilted by seeing GSP drop, so try an arena instead. There are gonna be some pet peeves you can't avoid, but if that's the case, you can still identify them and try to work around them. If you know you hate to play against rushdown characters, then you can focus on getting better at it. Or if you know you're gonna face a pet peeve, you can try to put yourself in a good mood and stay away from other frustrations so that your tilt meter is totally empty going in. Once you know what sets you off, you can look at how you tend to respond to anger. Are you a physical person or more verbal? If you're physical, you can prep a stress ball or exercise afterwards. If you're verbal, you can go to the bathroom or a secluded area and let off a bit of steam. In your head, of course. Like anything, once you understand your anger, it becomes a lot less scary. Okay, so we've covered a lot of heavy, complex, and personal stuff. Fortunately, there are some simple, nearly universal tips to beating those bad emotions. Before we go, we're gonna leave you with a few emotional management tools you can use right away. Bet you've heard this one before. First, just breathe. But really, it works, especially for anger. If you feel totally emotionally overwhelmed, breathing is an easy way to get a bit of calm back. Remember how emotions affect the body? Well, getting angry or frustrated or even sad often gets the body in an anxious, tight state. Taking deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth will slow your body down and help it unwind. These breathes help your body understand that it's not in danger. It also immediately puts your focus on something else. Breathing is basically the perfect distraction because you can always do it, you need to do it, and doing it can feel pretty good. Second, relax your body. Breathing helps unwind the body, but it won't unwind it entirely. To do that, you should actively think about your muscles and try to relax them. Let your shoulders sloop, let your posture loosen, and let your fingers unwind. You might be surprised to find out just how much tension you were holding and how good it feels to let it all go. Third, find an outlet. Find a way to vent a little in a non-negative, non-destructive way. That means you probably shouldn't go to a local anger room and smash stuff up. A good outlet could be a journal or a friend who will listen. A good outlet could even be a distraction. Sometimes you gotta take your mind off of whatever's got you going crazy. Just be careful that your distraction is healthy. So social media or quick play might be a bad idea. Once things have settled down, take a step back and put it into perspective. Most of the stuff that ticks us off is pretty small when you get down to it. When you put stuff into perspective, you realize that whatever's got you wound up probably won't mean as much to you next week. By a year, you might have forgotten about it entirely. To cap things off, we have one final tip from a Melee pro, Zane. When Zane takes a tough emotional loss, he takes a look at the game's VOD quickly after. That's a tough thing to do, but it makes sense. It's kind of like pulling out a splinter. It's annoying, painful, and it takes time, but once you're done, you feel less pain in that spot. When you look at the VOD, you get it over with and give yourself less space to obsess about it. You also take the focus away from what you can't control, the past, and put it on what you can, improving in the present. As one of the quickest improvers in Melee, we gotta take Zane's approach seriously. There's clearly some wisdom to it. Phew! Alright, that was a lot, wasn't it? We did say the mental game was huge, but we hope watching this video can help make mentality more manageable for you. Because we think you can take on your opponents and your emotions. Defeats and setbacks, loss and grief, isolation and turmoil, anguish and despair, nihilism and ruin, whatever smash or life sends at you, we know you got this.